Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we are going to be implementing Firebase Firestore queries into our blog application. If you missed the last episode, we talked about all the ins and outs of Cloud Firestore queries. Uh, so if you missed that, you can check it out right here. If you did watch that one, let's uh, jump into our implementation. <laughs> So before we get started, we are going to update our Firebase Firestore security rules because we're going to be adding two new paths to our application. So as you can see at the bottom, we've got the whiskey and the distillery paths, and we're just going to update these so that we can use these to show you our examples because they're not going to last very long in our application. So the first thing we're going to do is update our database service with some actual Cloud Firestore query calls. What we're going to be doing today is updating our blog application so that we can choose whether a blog post is published or not published. And we'll be learning about the Firestore queries by doing so. We don't have enough use case for Firestore queries yet in our blog application. So we do have some example functions we're going to be adding to our database service, but they're just, they're just for show. They're not actually gonna be used in our blog. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Cue the music. Cue the music. Okay, so we've added in a few functions to our database service. The first one is get published posts, and you can see we are getting a collection from Firebase, and then we're going to be using a where function on that collection. And then we're going to be using a where function on that collection reference to use Firebase queries. This specific query, we are looking for an is published field on all of our Firestore objects, and we're checking if that value is true. So what this query will do is it'll give us all of the published blog posts for our website. And the next one, get bourbon and get old bourbon, do the same thing. They're just using different operators. So the get bourbon is using the equality operator and that's gonna give us a list of all the bourbon documents in our Firestore database. And then we have the get old bourbon method. And this one, as you can see, is calling the get bourbon method, which returns a collection query. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a chain. And so there are gonna be two where clauses on this Firestore query. And what this is gonna do is it's going to make us create a Firebase composite index. You'll see that whenever we run this code and it will get set up automatically. Finally, we have the get Kentucky whiskey and this is a collection group query. And so this is gonna be searching sub collections on each whiskey database object. And we'll also need to create a collection group query index for this as well. So in order to track whether a blog post is published or not, we're going to be creating a dashboard component that us admins can use um, just to choose whether we want it to be published or not. Um, and this will also be where we can click whether we want to edit the post or not and create new posts. Um, it used to be on the home page and now we're just gonna have it on a dashboard. And by doing this, we'll be able to, on the home page, have a query that just returns the posts that are published. So what we need to do is actually generate a new component for our dashboard. So we can do that in the terminal using the Firebase CLI. It'll be ngGC for generate component, and then we'll give it the path that we want to uh, generate the component into. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter. Boom. Now we got a component. Now that we've generated the component, we just need to add it to our router so that we actually have a route to our new component. So if we open up the routing module, we just copy in a new route to our dashboard. Sweet. And the path is dashboard. We're obviously pointing to our dashboard component and we do want it to be behind our off guard service so that only Elliot and I with our account can log in. And infinite wisdom. And infinite wisdom. And gorgeousness. Yeah. 
The last step is to update the styling and put in the logic for the dashboard component as well as the home page component. So let's get started. So we just finished updating the home page and the dashboard components. We are here in our dashboard component TypeScript and a lot of this code actually came from our home page components so you might be familiar with it already. Uh, we have our blogs that we're, we're just getting all blogs on our dashboard component. We actually won't be using our new um, query here that'll be in our home page. Uh, we have our current user, the edit post function, our login button, and also this flip publish function which will go off and actually just flip whether the post is published or not published. So now we're in the HTML for the dashboard component and like before this is a lot of the home page component. Um, pretty much almost the same format. We do have a uh, publish unpublish button down here at the bottom though. Um, other than that it's very similar to the home page. Very similar. Very. So the SCSS for the dashboard component is going to be the same as the homepage SCSS for the most part. For the most um, part. We did add a couple of extra buttons down here. Um, obviously this is a lot of code so make sure you check out the GitHub repo so you can find the code there. The second thing we updated is our homepage component. So like you just saw on the dashboard, we took a lot of the functionality that was in the homepage out of this class and put it in the dashboard. but the one thing we did add is our Firestore query examples. You can see these here. These are the database calls that we added earlier in the episode. And we're just gonna console log the data from each one. And what's important to note is that these calls are going to require composite indexes. And you'll see those when we run these in the browser. And collection group queries. So the other thing we updated is the homepage HTML. Uh, we are now displaying only a list of published blogs, as you can see here. And this is going to take advantage of the Firestore queries, and this one is going to be staying as opposed to some of our other examples. Now it's time to go ahead and demo the work that we've got done today. We're here on our local build of the website, and we can go to the dashboard component now. Nice. And we have some blog posts here, just some dummy blog posts. And let's go ahead and publish one of them. Now if we go back to the home page, you'll Boom. see that it's only using the one that we published and the unpublished one is not here. Um, that of course is coming from our Cloud Firestore query. Very handy. Very something. Lastly, let's go over the examples that demonstrate some of the more advanced features of the Firestore queries. If we open up our console here, you can see we've got some console logs that say bourbon. This is the method that we wrote that just does a Firestore query for all of the Firestore objects that have a type of bourbon. And you can see we got back two documents here, so it's working. And if you notice, we've got quite a few other errors. And these errors are telling us that we need to make composite indexes and collection group query indexes for our other two examples. So if we just start with the first one here, this is a query index, and you can see this URL that Firebase gave us. If we just copy this and paste it into a new tab, then it will actually give us the collection that we need to create automatically in our Firestore project. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit create index, and this can take a little bit, so we're gonna fast forward. While we wait for that index to finish building, let's go ahead and take a look at our collection group query. So the second error we got is that we need a index for the collection group query because the last example we showed is querying a subcollection of other collections. And what's really cool about that is it will look in all of the subcollections across the top level um, whiskey collection that we have. If we copy this URL, we can get this index building as well. 
And here you can see the query scope is different. This one actually says collection group, and this is all we want. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now that those indexes are done building, we can go back to our app and take a look at our logs. So you see we have no errors, and we're actually getting data back from those indexed queries. First, you can see we've got an old bourbon, which is our chained query. This one is looking at any bourbon that is 10 years or older. And then the last two is the collection group query. It's going into the whiskey collection, and for each whiskey document, it's going into that document's distillery subcollection and running a query across all of these subcollections. So this is really cool and handy. And you can see we're getting back two different whiskeys here. So everything works. Today we added the Cloud Firestore queries to our Angular blog application, as well as step through generating the composite indexes and collection group queries through Firebase. We also added a dashboard component so that we can control which blogs are published and not published. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell up top or down low or to one of the sides. Wherever it is. Wherever it is. Peace. See ya. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so the last step, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>